should we start? Yeah, I think go ahead. I think everyone has joined. Uh, I've turned the waiting room off, so we're good to go. So whenever you're ready. Okay, you want to start uh, sharing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, um, everyone. Uh, depending on where you're joining us from, thank you very much for joining us for this session today. My name is Rachel Wangare. I work with uh, Intellicup. Um, so Intellicup and NIRAS are together implementing the Water and Energy for Food um, East Africa Regional um, Innovation Call. And so you will hear some people from um, Intellicup and some from NIRAS. So thank you very much once again. So today is more of an information session for um, our partners in the ecosystem that we um, hope to engage through this um, um, through this innovation call. And we will get into details on, on how you can get in, um, engaged in this, in this project. So um, we'll start off by introducing the uh, team members that are working on this project from both um, GIZ, who um, is the main uh, implementing partner, and then Intellicup and NIRAS. So um, I'm not sure whether there is, whether Lucy or Max Ben is in the meeting. Nope. I do okay. see Lucy there. Yes, I am there, okay. sorry. <laughs> Unmute button as always. Yes, so I am Lucy Pushke. I uh, manage the East Africa activities of this Water and Energy for Food initiative um, on behalf of GIZ. Uh, so we have the main uh, sort of our key piece of work is the innovation call and the collaboration with small and medium sized enterprises, uh, where we are teaming up with NIRAS and Intellicap. Um, but we also have other activities um, in the area of sort of innovation ecosystem building, um, uh, innovate, green finance, impact finance, and um, capacity building. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Lucy. Um, Max Ben is not here. If not, we can. Yeah, move he's. To... Yeah, okay. we can move on. Okay, Steve, have you joined? Uh, can yes, I just joined. Hello, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, welcome. Uh, so my name is Steve Toya. I'm the team leader for the project, working with Lucy and the rest of the team to implement the project. Thank you. All right. Um, and we also have Jovan, who is from NIRAS. I'm not sure Jovan has joined. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, Benson, uh, I can see you, and then Martin can follow if he's on the call. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Benson. I'm the BDS uh, uh, expert attached to uh, the program. Thank you, Benson. Martin? No? Okay. Kanika? All right then, um, so I'll hand it over to you, Ariel, for your introduction. Hi everyone, thanks. Uh, my name is Ariel Molino, uh, based in the with the team here in Nairobi with IntelliCap. Um, and I am responsible with, along with Rachel for the call for applications uh, and making sure we get really high quality applicants um, applying for the program. So thanks everyone for joining us today uh, and really excited to share more about the program with you. Um, in advance of, of the launch. Great. Thank you, Ariel. And to move on. Um, so um, for this, um, the agenda, high level agenda for this um, session is basically um, for us to share more um, insights on, on what uh, the we for f program is all about and what um, the East Africa Hub specifically is seeking to achieve. And then we'll talk a little bit about the call for application. As Lucy has mentioned, the regional innovation calls are at the heart of, of uh, what, uh, what the we for f program is doing. And then we'll um, also, at a high level, um, just share insights on, on the business advisory and access to finance uh, process. And then um, just share some um, information around how you can get involved in this and then um, we'll leave some bit of time for um, Q&A. 
So I'll hand it over to Steve um, and, and Lucy uh, to talk about um, the WE4F program and the East Africa Hub specifically. So maybe Lucy, you can start and then um, Steve can share um, some context uh, regarding the innovation call specifically. All right, so um, the goal of water and energy for food is to support innovations in these sort of three areas um, in order to increase food production, uh, improve food security and environmental sustainability, as well as poverty reduction. So rather big impact goals. And where is this coming from? Essentially, we're building on two previous projects. One was called Powering Agriculture, dealing with energy and food, or the energy and agriculture. And the other one, Sustainable Water for All, dealing with water and agriculture. And we realized, actually, there's a lot of different overlaps in these topics. So we kind of merged the programs. Um, and when we say when I say we, it's a multi-donor initiative uh, with the EU, USAID, BMZ, the Netherlands, the Foreign Ministry of the Netherlands, and CEDA involved. And essentially, um, the philosophy of all of this is that in order to reach this, these changes in the food and agricultural sectors, we need the private sector. And how do we do this? We particularly work with small, medium-sized enterprises that are in a position and interested into scaling into, into regional markets uh, that, are, that want to grow. And our role in essence is what financiers would say, building the pipeline. So we have this window of uh, 12 to 18 months of working together with SMEs to get them, well, essentially investment ready to help them develop their uh, business, um, well, their business, their business strategy, and um, to, well, essentially then <laughs> let them run off into the wild, but to have this facilitating role, particularly in this middle, miss in the missing middle, um, where sometimes it is quite hard to access finance for, for some of the smaller SMEs. Um, so that's really the motivation behind it all. And uh, the innovation call is one way as to how we select in a very open and transparent way um, our, our private sector partners. Over to you, Steve. Oh, thank you very much, Lucy. Uh, I don't have much to say really. Uh, she talked about private sector which is very critical for us to engage in this particular program. And again, as you talk about the building the pipeline, the idea is really for uh, you know, investors, impact investors, venture capital investors, private equity investors, really to come and, and say, look, we would love to invest in these particular companies, but these are the risk areas that we see. So you know, we for our program, can you help us uh, in you know, looking at all these areas, improving the companies so that down the line, within the next 12 to 18 months, we can invest in those companies having followed the process on de-risking the investments through our business development support and access to finance. And we need brokering partnership with those companies on a milestones and results based. And we also want those companies to chip in as well. And so we talk about more of the eligibility criteria going forward but that's a very important point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Steve. Um, we can now move into just talking about the call for application process, the criteria that we are looking at, and I'll hand it over to Ariel. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so I'll just spend a few minutes uh, talking about sort of what we're looking in you know what we're looking for in the innovators that that will key criteria are um, in terms of of selection uh it's our hope that you know those of you on this call will really help us um you know refer relevant enterprises uh help us engage and and help us sort of you know with outreach and spreading the word potentially so um lucy really touched uh, a lot on why 
uh, why water and energy food is there and, and what we're trying to achieve. So, um, you know, when we're looking for entrepreneurs, the sort of philosophical element, I would say, is, is really important to us. Um, so we're definitely really looking for entrepreneurs that are looking to expand their businesses. Um, you know, so they're looking to either expand geographically, uh, they're looking at product streams, they're looking at new customer streams, um, and they're, they're just looking to grow their business and diversify it in that sense. Um, we really want to help entrepreneurs actually increase their annual turnover. So again, entrepreneurs are really sort of hungry to look at the expansion of their business and actually increasing their annual revenues. Um, and as Steve mentioned, you know, one of the key objectives is really helping to facilitate them to raise capital. Uh, so entrepreneurs who are act actively looking at raising capital and actively sort of exploring those conversations with investors, um, but maybe who need some assistance in order to unlock that capital. Um, and that's really what what the program is, uh, is, is trying to provide um, for these entrepreneurs. Uh, so just in terms of, of the criteria, the geography that we're looking at is, of course, focused on East Africa. Um, so we are actively looking for entrepreneurs across the region, uh, including Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Malawi, and Somalia. Um, so we definitely want to encourage applicants from all of these countries, and we would love to end up with sort of a diverse cohort uh, and portfolio for the program that's hopefully representative, uh, you know, across the board. Um, in terms of age of the business, uh, the minimum uh, sort of operation that they need to have going is at least 18 months, um, and it should not be prototype stage. We are looking at businesses that you know, that have a fairly substantial turnover, you know, looking between 50,000 and 500,000 euros, um, and that have between five and 200 employees. So they, they should be young companies, but they are somewhat established in terms of the, the, the current operations of the business. Um, again, in terms of ambition, I already mentioned this, we're really looking at enterprises that are looking to scale. Um, because that's that's what the program is all about. So we want to make sure that they do want to grow um, and, and that the technical assistance can really go to help uh, them achieve that. Uh, and then we're looking at impact. And Lucy also touched on this when she mentioned, um, sort of introduced the program. We're really looking for entrepreneurs that have demonstrated either direct or indirect impact smallholder farmers, um, the environment, youth, and women. Uh, so, so sort of the best candidates can, can include all of that impact, but, but impact is a very key component and that's something that we're looking for um, in applying entrepreneurs is that impact angle. In terms of thematic areas, um, we are looking at the water, energy, and food nexus. So just to you know, there's a couple of example innovations here, but we're really looking at, um, at innovations across these thematic areas. And innovations does not necessarily mean technology. Uh, innovation could be in a business model. Innovation could be in, uh, you know, a targeted way that they're approaching the market. Uh, innovation does not mean for us, you know, explicitly technology. Um, we're really looking at, at interventions across production, processing, storage, distribution, inputs and information, um, and consumption. So that could be water and food, that could be energy and food, that could be water and energy and food. Um, and, and there's sort of a lot of a lot of buckets that you know that could be considered. We're really looking at sustainable um, food production in a more efficient way. Um, so more efficient use of water, more efficient use of energy to really increase um, food production and a positive you know, impact on society. Um, just to touch quickly on the selection process, we, based on, based on the other calls for applications that have run in the Middle East and South and Southeast Asia, we're hoping at least for about 70, 80 qualifying applications, um, we will be shortlisting 35 enterprises who will really be prepped to pitch to um, an expert panel of, of investors um, and technical advisors. So the idea is really that, that we'll prepare them to pitch and they will get direct inputs from the investment community um, that will be sort of inbuilt into their technical assistance plan, um, which Benson will talk about in, in a, just a minute. But for us, it's really important to include 
that investor feedback at a very early stage, um, again, with the intention of the establishing the business advisory to help unlock that capital. So the expert panel um, of investors will help us narrow that 35 down to about 25. Um, and we hope to contract at least 15, um, possibly more for the actual program. Uh, we, we realize that there might be some, some level of attrition as, as we sort of go through the whole process, but the ultimate goal is at least 15 enterprises um, to include in the, in the program. So that's um, just to touch a bit on, on the selection process in terms of the timeline. Uh, this is important. We have not yet launched applications. That's why we're sort of giving you uh, a sort of teaser uh, with, this, um, you know, with this session today. Applications will launch next Tuesday, that's May 18th, and they will run until June 15th. So applications will be open for about a month. Um, during that window, we will have two open information sessions for um, for anyone who wants to learn more about the program, whether they're entrepreneurs who have applied, whether they're partners like you who just want to learn more about what the benefits are of the program, um, those will be on May 20th and June 10th. Uh, so similar to this, but I think we'll probably have more questions on the actual process and, and the application for as entrepreneurs are really starting to fill that out. Um, so we're looking at evaluating and doing that first level of evaluation um, in early July. Mid-July, we're hoping to do sort of the second round um, interviews, some deals with, with those sort of shortlisted 35 enterprises. Um, and again, prepping them to sort of pitch, uh, pitch their businesses to that expert panel. Towards the end of July or early August, and we're still just finalizing on the exact date, that the expert panel will really help us deliberate and, and still on the, the final you know, number of, of entrepreneurs that we'll be working with. Um, so we hope to announce the final selection towards towards the middle of August. Um, and then the business advisory and finance access to finance support, as Lucy mentioned, will be delivered over a 15 to 18 month period. So it's it's quite um, a long haul uh, program uh, with with the entrepreneurs to really be able to to deliver that that support to them. Um, so I think that was it on my side in terms of the call for applications and, and sort of our main activities over the next couple of months. Um, so do stay tuned. We'll definitely be sending you more information um, this week. Specifically, uh, we have a communications kit and the website that we're really getting ready to launch and we'll be sharing that with you. Um, and the communication kit includes you know, sample social media posts, newsletter posts um, that we would love your assistance to sort of help um, share. So that information will be forthcoming after this call. Um, and I think that's it from me on the, the call for applications. Um, so I will hand it over to Benson to take us through uh, the, the, the meat and potatoes of the program uh, in terms of the, how the business advisory and access to finance uh, components will be delivered. So Benson. Right. Uh, thanks, Ariel. Um, yeah, so we, uh, myself and my colleague Martin, we'll be uh, looking to really uh, see how best we could support the select uh, SMEs. Um, looking at the specific areas uh, of priority within these uh, uh, businesses, um, depending on where you come from. Um, we, we, so the, the program is structured in uh, essentially two ways, uh, to provide either TA, uh, or coaching or capacity building. Um, and there's a small element on, on, on grant funding, which, which is basically what we're referring to milestone-based uh, grant. Um, so a mix of the TA and a bit of the grant, uh, depending again on the specific or tailored uh, business needs of each of these uh, SMEs that we'll be looking at. Uh, so beyond the post, selection period, then we essentially are getting, uh, we, we're going to, you know, take these businesses through um, a process where we will ideally conduct the needs assessment or just a full DD um, as, as this slide um, basically explains. Um, and that 
ideally is to establish uh, priority needs and areas that we think um, the businesses uh, will be looking to, uh, you know, receive a lot of the support in. Um, um, uh, Rachel, if, if you could uh, go to the next uh, slide. Um, yeah, so so the, the basket of the advisory uh, services that we're looking to provide is ideally in these elements. Um, so investment readiness, and on, on this area, my colleague, um, Martin, who will be running with access to finance component of the program is basically going to be uh, playing a lot of that. Um, so to help businesses, you know, uh, prepare, build their capacities around, you know, building the pitches, uh, you know, um, developing the, their capacities around, you know, investor match, uh, matchmaking, um, towards investment readiness. Um, the idea is to basically leverage on the technical support uh, and the grant funding that will that they will receive from um, the, the program, and also to um, you know to prepare them to you know uh, meet potential investors. And so we're also looking at uh, really looping in you know um, from the ecosystem uh, appropriate investors who will start also looking at these business deals as at a very early stage uh, to be able to work with them and, and to see if there would be any potential interests from that uh, pool of uh, investors. Um, um, Rachel? Um, so that's essentially some of the uh, services. Uh, and as I've said, access to finance, some of the packages, uh, ideally, um, the matchmaking, um, just to facilitate uh, that aspect of the matchmaking between the investors, financial institutions, or just any players within the ecosystem. And we are saying um, that this program is, is structured in a way to be able to leverage on the technical capacity or the technical assistance that these businesses will receive to be able to, you know, uh, leverage on this to raise more funding uh, for the various needs of the businesses. And so we think that the package that the, the WE4F program provides to these SMEs would be a really one-stop shop um, to be able to meet the various aspects of um, the entrepreneurs. Um, um, Rachel, we, if we could move to the next uh, slide. Um, right. Um, okay, so that's basically um, that's basically on the uh, access to finance and uh, business advisory. Uh, and, and I guess we want to leave as much time as possible for the question and answers, which we think um, is really the, the real deal for this session. So uh, over to Ariel. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benson. And, and I've already seen some questions coming in about how you can get involved. Thank you, Adelaide, for that question. So we uh, basically, how we are looking at your involvement. Um, Ariel, just move, move to the next slide. But basically, um, in addition to spreading the word, and um, as Ariel mentioned, we'll be sharing um, a a kit, a partner kit that has social media collaterals and language that you can use for your newsletters, for your posting on your social media networks. Uh, we'll also um, require your support in making those direct referrals. We've seen um, this is a very effective way of um, reaching to uh, good entrepreneurs. So if you know a company that fits um, the criteria that we are looking at, kindly do encourage them to, uh, to apply for this. And in addition to that, um, we, um, or rather Benson and Martin and, and the broader team will be working with uh, BDS um, providers to uh, really support the, the enterprises through their TA plans. So we will also um, seek your support there. Uh, we will come back on, on like um, the process of, of uh, enlisting as a BDS provider for the program, but that's a potential um, opportunity for, for engagement as well. 
So uh, great, we've covered most of uh, what we needed to present and um, we've seen some questions coming in. Please keep, um, keep sharing, uh, keep um, sending those questions. I can start with some questions from Waihiga. And uh, Steve, if you're there, probably you could take this. Um, so this is around um, the length of, of, of engagement um, and then the benefits that the program seeks to provide. Um, so please, can you rephrase the question for me? Because I didn't see it in the, in the chat room again. Okay, so the first question is around the, um, the length of the program engagement um, and then uh, the specific program benefits. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the, the length of the program is 15 to 18 months. Uh, we expect the program to end in 2023. And the idea is really to get to that point where most of the companies that would have supported would have raised capital and reach a substantial scale uh, uh, by then. I think in terms of the benefits, we, we outlined it a little bit in the, in the presentation, but essentially is the business development services where we can help you scale your operation between one vertical and another, one country and another, or one product service or another, and really help you to, you know, have a more, much more either diverse or scaled organization within that time frame, uh, or at least, you know, help you get there. Uh, the other aspect is access to finance, where, you know, should you need working capital or new new rounds of investments, we have the team and the network to provide you the the relationships and really support you through the business development services and the consultants we have on the ground to give you uh, those, those uh, relations to make you investor ready. Um, what I would suggest is for those who, of you on the call who are basically advisors to those some of those companies, I would really strongly recommend you to spend a bit of time, one, obviously referring them to us and to the program, but really maybe potentially supporting them through the process because it's very critical for us to have a partnership and, and a strong relationship because ultimately these companies need to grow and get supported to get to, to scale. Uh, and you know, it's really part of your, your, the work that we want to do. One aspect that is very, very important for us is we consider that a long-term partnership because ultimately we also want to make sure that should this program be successful, there will be other potential partners willing to support this program along the way and scale the program. And that's so it's very important for us to make sure that this program is successful and also successful for the companies. Uh, one last point on this, the, 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 the offerings of the, uh, of the program is that we can also help you financially on some of the aspects that you need to have executed. Uh, but I, I would say it is the cherry on the cake, right? As well the cherry on the cake than, you know, you're coming for a big pot of money, et cetera. The, the pot of money is really you growing and getting to the level of, of those uh, uh, skill that you want to have. So for the advisors, uh, the benefit is you potentially be able to support those companies going forward and for the companies or the investors, it's scaling and getting a nice return. Um, and then I'll, ask, I'll stop there, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Steve and Ariel, because you spoke about impact on, on the criteria that we're looking at, maybe you can answer this. Um, what exactly might you mean with showing proof of either direct or indirect impact? Rachel, do you want me to take that or Lucy, do you want to take the, the question on impact? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, mean, I can start and then maybe Lucy can add on in case I missed anything. So um, what we're really looking here in, in terms of impact is, so for an example of an indirect impact would be maybe an organization that's working with a cooperative uh, or a group of farmers at sort of a higher level um, versus direct impact of actually working to improve farmers' livelihoods, improving their income generation levels, um, improving their productivity levels in terms of the amount of, you know, of produce that they're able to, to deliver. So the impact that we're looking at, you know, is, is 
either the, the business is working directly with, with farmers to provide products and services and information to help them sort of equip themselves better, or they're working maybe one level up with, with some level of institution that is then working with, you know, with farmers. So that would be sort of an indirect um, impact that we're looking at. But, but yeah, Lucy, if you want to add on to that. Yeah, so I think um, the direct impact is very much business focused in the sense that it's about increasing turnovers, raising investment, um, expanding to new countries, etc. So on one hand, we have very strong business indicators that we're looking at and that we aim to achieve, um, which in itself is an impact for us. Um, and then also in addition to what Ariel said is because we have this focus on water energy food, um, we do want to look into, okay, with the technology provided, with the uh, kind of financing, enabling uh, the use of uh, less water, etc. We're going to look at how much water has been saved, how much food has been produced, um, how how much CO, CO2 has been has been or greenhouse gas emissions have been saved. So there we're looking more overall after the after the entire time of working together, what is the impact that the business solution that is being offered has had. But that's really something this is not something that the business has to do, or this is not something that's really part of what the business has to achieve. Ideally they will. But uh, this is something that we are going to look at uh, in addition to the work that was described now. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Lucy. If I, if I may add, uh, we shouldn't forget, you know, impact on women, youth, uh, et cetera, as well, obviously. Yeah. 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 So um, Kristen has a question around um, whether the groups will be promoting the opportunity to receive something like a unique application code to track that. Maybe that's something we can look into or see if you want to comment that, comment on that. So, I mean, there's no, initially there's no real relationship where we'll say, okay, this particular organization recommended this particular company to the program. So we'll give that program a direct relationship. I think, because of the nature of the core, which has to be a level playing field, it would seem that we're given like a preferential treatment to a particular organization for to try its own personal thing. I think it has to be in the relationship with the company that you have developed, that you support the company to apply, then obviously there's a communication that is going on between the two of you to be able to get you know that information out. Um, we may look into it, but technically we haven't foreseen it. And I suspect that in terms of compliance to the way the innovation call is run, it may not be uh, compliant actually. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I think it's uh, Catherine, right? Kristen, yes. sorry. Yes. 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 Thank you. So there is a question uh, on um, whether we have a commitment fund um, uh, from the program for the fundraising bids. Of the so I'm not sure I understood this particular question. Uh, Adelaide, do you want to open your mic and uh, screen so that you clarify that for us, please? Yeah, yeah sure. So uh, my question was on the... Can you please, please be louder? Sorry, I think I'm having issues with my mic. So can you hear me now? Yes. Great. So uh, my question was, sorry, my question is... Um, in the event that the companies are fundraising, so does the program like back them such that uh, maybe they say, let's say the company is fundraising 250,000 euros. So does the program have a backing for them? So let's say they can say the first 50,000, you you are going to ah, be funded on ah, that. Then now okay. they, yeah. So uh, the, the question is a direct contribution to, the, to investing in the company, no. But what we may do is, and we're considering that kind of instrument, and thank you for the question, we're considering that kind of instrument whereby we can work with a guarantor, like a Africa Guarantee Fund or a, a US, ex-USDC, but now a DFC, or any kind of guarantor 
to support in the risk in the investment, maybe at the level of 50K. But these are new financial instrument and innovation we're looking into. Uh, but we cannot do a direct contribution for fundraising, but we can support the company financially, as I said, the cherry on the, on the cake for certain direct milestones that help the company grow. So that, that's essentially the answer. What I would say is that there is a, a clear uh, uh, support considered as to raising the capital. So typically, and, and this is hopefully the way investors will look at it, is that because we are in a sense subsidizing their due diligence to a large extent, the amount of money that essentially the company could be awarded in terms of BDS and access to finance support can be used as a you know, reduction in that, uh, I, I believe. So um, I hope I've answered your question. Uh, uh, maybe it wasn't, it was mentioned already, but it's very, very important that all of you, you know, at least once a week or every day, if you want, consult the FAQ on the website, because all of these information we will put out there to give much more detail and so that you have a clear clarity on those uh, typical questions. Thank you. I think there's a hand raised. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, Godfrey, I can see your hand up, but before I come to you, um, maybe I we can answer this question from Laura. What kind of support on the process, specific tasks, uh, do, you, do we need um, the ESOs to provide to the applicants? So I can take that, Rachel, I think from, uh, from the application point of view and sort of helping get the word out. Um, so thanks, thanks for the question, Laura. So after this call um, or the course of this week, we'll be sharing a communications kit with you and that will have you know, image captions, images, everything for you to help us disseminate on whatever social media channels um, that you manage, whether that's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or, or Instagram. Um, so one is you know, really helping us just spread the word. Um, so, so we will be sharing that. So that would sort of be the, you know, the first ask of really just helping us generate interest um, broad your networks. The second uh, thing would be is if you have entrepreneurs based on the information that we've gone through today that you think would really benefit from this program and really align with the criteria, um, please specifically refer them um, and encourage them to apply for the program. Um, you know, I, I think uh, that that always generates really positive uh, results. And I know Steve is gonna say there's issue with compliance, um, but we cannot have uh, any preferential treatment. But if you say, hey, Ariel, I think you have a really good business and you should really apply for this program, I. I don't think that raises compliance issues, but but Steve can clarify on that. So um, the biggest thing immediately would just be helping us really spread the word um, as soon as we launch. Um, and and I mean specifically, that's that's really what we're looking at is it either you know through mentioning it in your newsletters or mentioning on social media. Um, and yeah, Steve, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, I know your concerns. <laughs> no, no, no. So I, over and beyond the compliance element, um, what I will say is that. Uh, if the company says, actually, okay, you refer me to this thing, I don't have a clue on how to, to, to do this thing, help me. But So it becomes a commercial relationship between you and the company, right? We are not party to this bilateral agreement that you would have with the company. So look, you're going to provide me technical support or whatever to fill in the application to run through the process. It's really up to between you and the company. We don't need to be private to it at this point. So it's really up to you to see whether or not if you recommend a company, you feel that the company is good enough and fits the criteria, et cetera, and you have a commercial relationship with the company, we are not private to it. So it's, it's really up to you. Um, that, I hope it does answer the question. Thank you. And I just thought of one other thing, sorry, Rachel, that I would add is I, I see some investors who've joined. Uh, thanks, thanks so much to those of you who have joined. If, um, if any of you who are investors on the call who would be interested to join our expert panel to really help us provide feedback and help us in the selection, um, please let us know. That is a, sort of a, a group of you know, investors that we are looking to put together. So that would be um, another sort of specific ask to the community. Um, so if, you know, if you're available and willing, definitely let us know. Um, or you'll be hearing from us. We might ask you anyway, since you've been on the call. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Godfrey, I'll hand it over to you. Yes, thank you so much for this initiative. Are, are you hearing me properly? Yes. Yeah, my I have some two questions there. Eh? Number one, uh, different companies are at different stages of development or at different level of growth. So how are you intending to support the different uh, companies at different stages? Because some are starting, some are already in business, some are already big. So how are you intending to work with the different uh, levels of those companies? Then number two, are there minimum requirements for someone to be part of this initiative? I think those are the two questions I have. Thank you very much. Shall I take it very quickly? Yes, but it's the same way. So thank you very much uh, for the questions. Uh, so the first one is, we are looking for companies that are scaling or about to scale. So these are not new startup companies, et cetera. There must be in existence for 18 months or plus and be generating between 50,000 and 500,000 euros equivalent in revenue. So these are not large companies, but they're not startups really either. So these are companies that are ready to scale, you know, or scaling already, and then need additional support to really distribute their innovations further. So that, that's really the, the, the answer to the question. And obviously in the media kit, on the website, in the FAQ, all this information will be made available. On your, okay. on your sec second question, uh, which I already forgot. <laughs> the criteria, minimum criteria. Yeah, so I just mentioned them. Yeah. These are the minimum criteria. The minimum. I think it was the different companies at different stages, how we would... Um, I, I did answer that was as well. How we support them yeah, that it depends, it depends on the yeah. So as I said, these are companies that are scaling or about to scale. So these are the new companies or you know uh, very old ones. And the idea is really to give them business development support and access to finance by one doing a, a diagnostics with them, finding out where the areas of improvement should be and really supporting them through any of the areas of improvement that they identify on a milestones basis along the way. So I can give you an example. If you're saying, look, you're struggling to do managing your finances, you don't have a proper accounting system, or you don't have an accountant, even part-time, et cetera, we we'll look at it and say, look, for an investor to be interested in your company, at least you have clean financials, right? So we can support you in that aspect. You want to do business development of your innovation into, let's say, from Kenya to Rwanda, and you don't have any idea of the, the market, etc. So we may support you to do a market study and maybe help you in terms of milestone to get somebody employed to do the business development of your innovation in the country, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So depending on your real particular need, then we can support you along those lines, but we need to agree on that. Once you've gone through the shortlist and, and the final selection, we will go through due diligence, review all the capa capacities that you have, and really support you to reach a point where hopefully at the end of the program, or ideally before, you've attracted sufficient capital to essentially fly on your own wings, really. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. So there's a question by Eddie Truda. I hope I've pronounce the, the name well. Um, I am not clear on their question. Um, if you can unmute and maybe just... Um... Edith Ruda, are you there? If you can unmute and just uh, ask your question. Hello? Um, yes. Uh, according to, I, I can't remember, the, the, there's a one uh, is, who, who talked about business development um, services. Yeah, what my question was, uh, um, if you are, if you, you are involved, uh, you are engaging in uh, uh, providing BDA support, uh, are you going, to, are you eligible to apply for, for the funds because you are supporting the other activities? We're working on the community, so is it possible to apply for the fund? Hello? 
Yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I totally understood, but if it's a, a you're an organization that is providing support. Yes. To companies that are working in energy or water. Yes, or, water, yes. Water, energy, and, yeah, and okay. food. Yes. Yeah, is so it your organization that is providing support to companies that yes. are doing that, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. you're kind of an advisor to them, right? On yes, different yes. aspects. Yes, yes, so different I, I, advisors. Yes, so unless you're providing a new process and innovation related mm -hmm. to that, to the mm -hmm. ecosystem, mm -hmm. it, it sounds very, you know, you, you as a person, as an organization cannot apply. You would actually be one of the consultants mm -hmm. that we may use to help those companies grow. So you'd okay. be more on the working with Benson, for instance, as a mm -hmm. potential consultant in the country to support those companies to grow. But those companies that you're supporting will be the one applying for the for the, uh -huh. for the program. Okay. I, I, I got you. you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions um, on the chat box, um, but if anyone else has a question, please feel free to unmute. If not, I'll hand it over to C for the vote of thanks, and then we can close early. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Uh, well, what I would like to add is, um, all of you, whether or not you're not in one of the countries, if you do have, uh, you know, networks over and beyond your country to disseminate information about the program, please do. Essentially, we really would want the information to be out there, notably in Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, Tanzania, obviously. But uh, we feel that usually, you know, Kenya has a, a large proportion of applicants, etc and really would really need your support to go over and beyond uh, uh, Kenya to really get uh, the, um, the, the word out there. So on, on this final note, uh, I would like to thank you very much for your time and interest in water and food uh, for energy. And maybe I can leave it to uh, Lucy to close, if I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> what is there to say? Um, we're looking forward uh, to getting the new cohort um, of SMEs. In the past, we've had some very good experiences collaborating um, with equity funds, impact investors, etc. And so we hope to, to, to continue on that route. Um, I think there's a lot of great ideas, great potential out there. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to launch this. Thank you for joining us. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you again for joining us and have a lovely, lovely cold evening. It's cold in Nairobi. So <laughs> enjoy the evening. Um, free to leave at your own pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.